Welcome to FSTN. I'm Haywood. Did you buy my crap? Today on FSTN, we're talking about a controversial topic, cold calling. There are several important points you need to know and follow in order to be a cold calling machine. Number one, cold calling is just a numbers game. Remember that. You need to place massive amounts of calls and talk to huge numbers of people. Yes, that means hundreds of calls. Don't waste time on research or learning about prospects. That's time you waste when you are not on the phone. You need to place lots of calls. It is a numbers game. Whoa, wait. First, I need to clear some things up here. First of all, do you know what FSTN stands for? That's the fake sales training network. Just like there's fake news today, there's fake sales training that can actually be more harmful to your career and your income if you follow it. Let's take his point about the numbers game. Prospecting should not be a pure numbers game. It's a quality game. It doesn't matter how many calls you place. What's important is the amount with which you have success with, right? A baseball player could swing at every single pitch, but only the quality swings have a chance of hitting the ball. Casino games, those are numbers games. Sales and prospecting, that's a quality game. So yes, you do need to be putting in activity, but it's got to be quality activity in order to have any chance to get through to and actually speak with the buyer. Point number two for successful cold calling. For every no you get, you're that much closer to a yes. So go out there and get those no's. Tell yourself, okay, I'm calling like crazy. I got that no, that means I'm closer to my next yes. Bring on the nose. What? You're no closer to a yes unless you're doing the right things to get to the yes. The previous no has absolutely no bearing on your next call. Activity solely for the sake of activity doesn't get you closer to success. If I flipped a two-headed coin a hundred times, am I any closer to getting a tail? on the 101st flip? No, because I'm not doing the right things to get the result that I want. Quick story here, a single golfer joined our group to round out our foursome. Now let me be kind and say that he was not very good. Okay, he was awful. <laughs> he had a great attitude though. Every time he'd dribble one off the tee or shank one by the green, he'd say, you know, if I just had a chance to play more, I'd be better. No, not unless he changed what he was doing. <laughs> He'd just get more consistent at being bad since his activity would never produce good results. So the same thing is true with your sales calls. More activity does not give you better results. Better activity does. Our next important point for being successful at cold calling is that you need to love rejection. That's right. You are going to be rejected all of the time. So deal with it. Look rejection square in the eye and say, I own you. Bring it on. Rejection does not phase me. Let me ask you, what kind of warped individual loves that dreaded feeling of rejection? And is it even humanly possible? Well, perhaps maybe, but there are special institutions and treatments for those people, right? Actually, you want to avoid this thing called rejection. Otherwise, in the real world, what happens is that people avoid the activity that causes those feelings of rejection. Maybe you've been there. So the truth is, understand what rejection really is. It's how you define an experience. It's not the experience itself. So if you didn't accomplish your primary objective on a call, don't say you were rejected. That's like telling yourself that you suck. Instead, look at it as something that just didn't work or maybe it wasn't a fit right at that point. And then ask yourself, what can I learn from this? Further, 
How about proactively getting something positive out of every call, even if you didn't get the appointment or the sale? You can get a win on every call, even when you get a no. For example, you could plant a seed for the future or simply keep the door open for a future contact. Our fourth important cold calling point is that the telephone is just for setting an appointment. Get it as fast as possible and get off of the call. Do not get into a sales conversation on the phone. The phone is used to set the appointment, nothing more. I used to hear that in the early 80s when I first started in business. It was false then and it's even more so now. Inside sales has never been more popular with technology today. And salespeople are using the phone to sell every type of product or service. And sure, there's no doubt that face-to-face -face communication is the most effective way to do so, but it's also the most time-consuming and costly. So limiting ourselves by getting off of a call too early unnecessarily lengthens the sales process. Now indeed, your sales model might involve a face-to-face -face visit, but that visit will always be more productive if you take your initial call further. And if you disqualify someone by phone, you didn't have to incur the time and the expense and the opportunity cost to find that out in person. Our fifth and final point, never give those nasty gatekeepers and screeners any information. Remember, they can't buy from you. Answer the request vaguely and then be assertive in saying it's a business matter and that you need to talk to the boss. First of all, does anyone's title have gatekeeper or screener in it? No. So why have people received that description, gatekeeper screeners? Well, it's because of salespeople who are not able to effectively communicate their possible value to assistants. That's right. They're buyer's assistants. And we as sales pros should also look at them as our assistants too. And they also might in fact be a decision maker, at least an influencer and they need to be treated like a buyer. Trying to go around or above or over or through an assistant and then being evasive labels the salesperson as a cheesy buffoon and simply intensifies the screener's resolve. So we've got to engage them, ask them questions. We want to learn more about the buyer and them and the buyer situation. And hey, if they need to know why you're calling, be prepared to give them a version of your value-packed opening. Bottom line, just like the fake news that we're exposed to more and more every day, we need to be cautious about fake sales advice. Don't buy into the false beliefs and the, the myths about telephone prospecting and cold calling. Instead, prospect professionally, the smart calling way. Take the cold out of it and you're going to make your calling easier more fun, and more successful. So there you have it, the five important points you need to know to be successful in cold calling. Coming up after the break, how to trick people into saying yes every time you get an objection. You won't believe what you're about to hear. Stay tuned. No, just no, just no. I want to send to you free my newly revised book, How to Place the Successful Sales and Prospecting Call, where I take you step by step through each part of my proven seven step sales process. I also give you hundreds of examples of messaging to use on your calls. Now, we've sold over 10,000 copies of the previous edition of this book, and I'm giving away the revised version free. Why? Well, I'm hoping you're going to love it, and I hope it's the start of a great relationship. Again, the book is free. All I ask is that you help with the shipping and handling. Order it right now.